So you may have been playing Hunting Horn, or considered playing it, but don't know how you can improve your hunt times and general gameplay. That's what I'm hoping to help you with today, after about 200 hunts on Sunbreak alone with the Hunting Horn. In this video, I'm going to be going through the optimal combos you should definitely be using, as well as a general game plan if you're picking up the weapon for the first time, as well as the times you should be using your silk binds and the uses themselves. Let's cover the neutral play of Hunting Horn first. This refers to a monster that not being in a vulnerable position such as stun, traps or knockdown. In almost all situations your go-to options will either be crush, cord slash performance or forward smash. If you're more experienced fighting a monster you can also do backward strike after crush to reposition away from a potential hit. Generally you want to be holding these attacks for if you can hit the head to try and get yourself a knockdown opening up the monster to your high damage combos. Keep in mind your performance recital also gives you iframes so you can go through attacks and roars without taking damage if timed properly. Just be careful when multi-hitting attacks come out from the monster. Once you have the monster in a vulnerable position it opens up a plethora of combos you should be doing. If your focus is purely on damage your two primary combos depending on your skill setup will be as follows crush overhead smash cord slash performance and repeating this does crazy high damage in all situations and is fairly sharpness efficient. The other primary combo which you should be using if you're focusing more on an elemental based build is crush multi crush kick up. This is because it hits very quickly giving a lot of value to not only your element but your silkbind shockwave as well. Only downside is at the cost of lots of your sharpness so be wary. I recommend running protective polish if you plan on playing like this because it eats through sharpness very quickly. An honourable mention should definitely be made here, the crush plus cord slash performance combo is also extremely useful as it uses very low sharpness and keeps your infernal melody production slightly above your normal generation. And if you want to be more aggressive in neutral, this is quite a safe choice as you can use cord to propel yourself in a direction or on the other end use performance to dodge an attack that risks hitting you because you're playing more aggressive. With that out of the way, we move on to your silk binds. I recommend you run silk bind shockwave on whichever scroll skill you'll be using most as the damage increase from the additional shockwaves is quite significant. I personally recommend running either sonic bloom or beat of resonance as they are both much easier to use than earthshaker and are more enjoyable in my opinion since earthshaker locks you in place for quite an amount of time usually leading to you getting hit. With the silk bind selected the next point is when to use your silk binds. You can use your silk bind shockwave to armor through roars and attacks. So using silk bind shockwave to close to a monster on their roars will passively increase your neutral game as well as combo game if it leads you to an opening. As well as that an excellent time to use your shockwave is at the beginning or end of downing a monster. If your Silkbind Shockwave is still active, you don't need to refresh it at the start of the down unless you have an Infernal Melody, which you should try and get up immediately with Shockwave. As mentioned, it's also valuable to use your Silkbind Shockwave if you know the monster is about to get up. With your Bead of Resonance or Sonic Bloom, it's the same kind of deal. If you get a monster down or a big opening, it's worth putting down either of them at the start or towards the end of the knockdown, since both will increase your damage. However, you shouldn't do either of these if you don't already have Silk Pine Shockwave active as the damage lost is significant. It is also worth noting you can be a lot more lenient using Bead and Sonic Bloom if you have Wirebug Whisperer level 3 as you get back a Wirebug passively more quickly. Next I'll quickly go over Infernal Melody usage. If you've been beating the monster for a little bit you should be pretty close to having an Infernal Melody. It can be activated one of three ways being from the end of your Silkbind Shockwave, Magnificent Trio or the end of slide beat. Generally speaking you want to get out as many infernal melodies as possible especially when a monster goes down as you can maximize its damage. In the case that a monster has been knocked down you should open damage with silkbind shockwave into infernal melody as it's very fast so you can get out a few combos onto the monster. On the opposite side of the spectrum if you choose to use magnificent trio you should opt to use it towards the end of the knockdown 
to guarantee you get some damage into the down as well. Next, I'm going to go on to the general game plan. You can take into hunts to get th these things into practice. Opening up on the hunt, it's worth getting a free self-improvement buff as you'll usually be walking around with your weapon unsheathed. Upon starting the encounter with the monster, a Silkbind Shockwave through the creature's opening roar is a solid way to start doing damage. After this, watch for monster openings and strike when given the chance with either crush or chord slash perform to acquire a knockdown. Upon your first knockdown, try to get in three cycles of your current optimal combo, being the crush overhead slam recital or the crush multi crush kick up and then ending with another silk bind shockwave or your two wire bug ability. Once they get back up, repeat your neutral game of crush and chord spam to the monster's face until you get another knockdown. This time we open up the combo train with a silkbind shockwave into infernal followed by two combo sequences into another silkbind shockwave or trap if you want another opening or to capture the monster repeat these until the monster dies and you should be pretty safe with those things out of the way i wanted to give a mention to useful skills for hunting horn these should be taken on your personal experience. If you're new with Hunting Horn, I always recommend Evade Extender at level 1 or 2 as it's quite good for repositioning. Slugger at level 3 if you know a monster won't give you many openings at all to secure those first few knockdowns quicker. And Protective Polish slash Speed Sharpening at max if you're running an elemental based build as the crush multi crush kick up combo will eat through your sharpness quickly this has been my how to up your hunting horn in sunbreak i hope this helps some of you to improve your experience playing the game and if i've missed anything feel free to leave them in the comments for myself and others to see thank you for watching